Welcome back to the Worth Wellness Podcast. This is episode number 10, and I'm your host, Erica Worth. I am on a mission to help you cultivate a daily experience of kindness and connection with your body. Worth Wellness was created to also help you nurture lifelong healing through body partnership. Today's episode is special in that I'm going to share with you five strategies for building your internal resources in times of high stress. So let's get right to it. To be completely honest with you, the last week or so has really caused this sense of derailment within me, not really knowing even exactly what hit me, but just feeling like I've been struck down hard and needing to tap into this whole idea of building internal resources, making them strong for times of high stress has just become a personal necessity. I want to share with you my five tips for building internal resources in times of stress. But first, I want to start with a quote by Kelly McGonigal. She's a PhD research psychologist from Stanford and is an author, loves science, all things um, movement and science as well, has a lot of really neat research. She says, you have the power to choose your own default state. And I think in times of stress, our default states are revealed. And I think it's an empowering idea that we could choose our own default state based on the internal resources we have built prior to the event of a stressor. So how exactly do we do this? How do we build our internal resources? I'm going to give you these five strategies to help strengthen them It's essentially a set of principles or practices, if you will, that help to create an atmosphere within where psychological ease feels more accessible, regardless of what's happening around you. We don't have to wait for a change in our environment to trigger an emotional shift. We can shift from within. So the first tool I'm going to give you is observe or observation. So this is the idea, let's just do imagery for a minute. Imagine a little butterfly coming onto your picnic blanket and you're just noticing it, kind of mesmerized. Without judgment, I want you to simply notice your thoughts. Sometimes simply the act of acknowledging that unresolved clatter, just say the clatter is there. The clatter and the chatter, (laughs) meant to say chatter, Um, is enough to bring a degree of relief, to bring us down a notch from that state of heightened stress. When we just merely observe our feelings, it takes them out of the pending area. They're no longer pending, now they're in present. And they don't have to continue to scream for our attention. And through this observation, we are essentially inviting them to take up the space they're asking for, but in a way that's pretty neutral. And it's seeking to stop the perpetuation of further emotional distress. Research actually does support, and I'll link a study in the notes, that the individuals who are most resilient to stress are the ones who are able to normalize it. So they see it as an unavoidable part of life. In some ways, we can't know exactly what stressors will hit us, but we can anticipate stressors will hit us. So it's not as shocking or surprising and then are willing to engage with it. And that's what I'm kind of giving you strategies for when I say observe, we're beginning to engage with. And then those are able, those people are also able to see it, those that are more resilient as a means of enhancing their capacity to adapt and giving them an opportunity to discover something new as a result. So none of these things above things are possible without first observing our emotions though. So let's elaborate a little bit more on what observing could look like. How do you go about bringing those subconscious thoughts into the tangible or your conscious awareness? So think about this. If your current emotions were a color, what color would they be? 
red, blue, green, or you can get more elaborate if you like detail, <laughs> lavender, sea foam, amber. Colors do have feeling or emotional associations with them oftentimes. I know this last weekend, I felt like the little green girl from it, the the Pixar movie Inside Out. Um, she's discussed, so I know very lovely. <laughs> but that really was the best way I could describe sometimes what we feel in our body or in our emotions is not is not something that can be put to language always. And so it's easier to draw to draw it into our awareness by way of something that isn't language. That's why talk therapy doesn't always work because sometimes it's sitting so deep in your body, you you can't actually bring your language center to recognize it. So, and I'm probably not explaining that well, but um essentially, yes, yeah, so give it a color. Then let's give it an intensity. How loud is it? On a scale from 1 to 10, you know, 1 being faint and 10 being it's like those clanging gong symbols or that loud megaphone screaming in your ear. Okay, so maybe I'm green and I'm probably like it a 7. That just helps you even be able to start to identify what this feeling is starting to look like. Just notice without judgment. Then ask, where am I feeling these emotions in my body? So let's drop into our present experience. We're bringing our emotions down into the physical body. And this is part of the engaging with the stress is to practice the experiencing of our feelings. Don't just think about them. It's good to observe them. But what is the experience of them? This is important if we want to allow them to be released and flow through and out of the body, which leads us to number two tip, which is encounter or number two strategy. So we're going to focus energy towards what's hurting. So to the specific area of the body where your emotions are causing some sort of undesirable sensation. So to give you an idea, Here's some ideas of where your emotions might be showing up in your body. Do you have tension in your neck? Do you have churning in your stomach? Are you feeling queasy or unable to digest food? Pain in your temples or on your forehead? Are you clenching your jaw? I mean, just even check in right now. Is your jaw relaxed or your teeth clenched? Are you having heart palpitations? Are you experiencing shortness of breath or that racing heart sensation? Do you feel clammy, sweaty, nervous? So once you identify where your emotions are showing up in your body, where they're manifesting, the idea is to bring specific care and kindness and attention, just like you would an open wound. If you are on a hike and you fall and scrape your knee open on a rock, you're not going to then put a bandaid on the back of your neck. That would be weird. Why would you do that? So make sure when we're thinking about it's, it sometimes can seem weird to think of your emotions in your body and to tend to your body when it's your emotional self that hurts, but your body is very much experiencing the same emotions that you're kind of feeling up here cerebral, cerebrally. <laughs> Sorry, can't say that word. Cerebrally, those are those emotions are not just up in your head. They are they are affecting your body. It's important to recognize that. So here's what maybe tending to the wound could look like: the softening of your face. Just relax your jaw. If you open and close your mouth, you can feel that space, um, kind of near back towards the ears on. Uh, underneath kind of your high cheekbones where you open and close your mouth and you can kind of feel that that area kind of rise and fall. Just massage it for a minute and then relax. You can practice deep breathing, specifically diaphragmatic breathing where you inhale and your tummy gets expansive and you exhale allowing it to fall. There's lots of different breathing techniques. Um, You can do alternate nostril breathing, which I'll put 
in the show notes a couple explanations for these and then um, four, seven, eight breathing. All of these are very helpful in bringing your body to a state where you're able to make something meaningful from stress. Another thing you could do if it's digestive discomfort, I have done this personally and it does help. Actually, more so my husband has helped me do this because I have been in so much pain with digestion dysfunction. And so it's just rubbing a little bit of um, essential oils, get something high quality organic. Um, peppermint is a good choice um, with a carrier oil, make sure because it can be really strong by itself, such as coconut or olive oil. And rub it on your belly while administering a abdominal massage specific to help with digestion flow. And I will also link a how-to video because it is pretty specific that you need to know the path of your digestive tract. And um, that can be helpful just another aid, another way to show self-love. Or maybe it's you could benefit from some temperature variation. So maybe you want to drop a hot bath if you're just feeling that tension everywhere. Sometimes heat can help just relax you. Or maybe you need to be refreshed and reawakened and reinvigorated. And so a cool shower could help in that sense um, if you're feeling the hot and sweaty clammy. So it's important to pay attention as well to the healing setting. So what setting are we going to practice these specific body interventions in? Um, Maybe sounds could be supportive. For instance, rain sounds, nature sounds, ocean waves. If you like soft piano or guitar music, is there anything that could help enhance this experience? Um, you know, do you need to go somewhere quiet, you know, at least maybe somewhere where there's not, you know, stuff everywhere, or you have space to lie comfortably on the floor, or maybe you need a blanket, you're cold, like just think about your setting as well. And creating an atmosphere where your body wants to heal, can relax in and let go. I know there are certain environments where you're probably more inclined to feel like you can relax, and let go. And there's certain environments where it's more difficult. So just think about that. Notice that. Then as we move forward, after we have observed and encountered our emotions, you know, drawn the attention and energy to the areas affected in our body and practiced specific care to those areas, let's think about how we could begin to shift the emotional state. So if the state you observed in the first part of the process isn't one that you want to remain in, What emotional state do you want to shift to? At Worth Wellness, we operate by way of this idea of body partnership and our approach to healing. And we believe that the whole body is affected by our emotional state. As we see when we did the encounter step in this this process. Therefore, it is reasonable to believe that our whole body needs to be involved in the shifting process as well. So we aren't really talking about our feelings. Like I said before, we're experiencing them. So here's how we can begin to see the shift. Here's how we can begin to engage our whole body to shift. Movement is very powerful. And there's lots of different ways you can use movement to help facilitate a shift. So let's ask ourselves, what whole body movement allows you to experience your feelings and then give them a channel to move through and out of the body. So walking can help to produce a state of more hopefulness, give you more perspective, if those are specific things you're hoping to shift to. If you're hoping to shift to a sense of power or energetically more assertive, boxing, kickboxing, that sort of thing can be helpful. Um, If you want to feel more creative and bold and beautiful, dance, something like dance, or, or even yoga could fall into that category as well. If you want to feel more flexible, running, if you want to feel more endurance, if you want to feel more persevering, more strong and elicit that sort of emotional state. And then also I'll mention with yoga can help facilitate a state, a state of more peace, balance, centeredness, or even focus. 
So it's important when you're choosing your movement to look for something that matches the intensity of the feeling, as well as consider what actions will help facilitate the particular emotion you're desiring to shift to. And then after you've chosen a movement, do it. Perform it. Take a couple minutes, even if you're just thinking about now in your own experience that you've shown up to this podcast in, pause it, go do your movement, come back to it later. Then I want you to check back in after you've done your movement and ask yourself the questions we started with. What color are my emotions embodying now? So we're just checking in. What level is their intensity? Do I still feel that they're screaming at me, you know, level nine or whatever, or have they quieted significantly? And then am I still feeling my emotions manifesting anywhere in my body? I just want to say it's okay too if your emotions have dropped out of your head and into your heart because that really is a better center to live from. It's definitely a more grounded and connected one. In a podcast interview I listened to recently, Kelly McGonigal, who I mentioned with the opening quote, was talking about how in her workshops, one of the things she'll ask participants is if you were to think of where your sense of self is from your body, like where you live from um, most often, what part of your body would it be? And she said, oftentimes people describe it as either their head or their eyes. And I heard that and I was like, you know what? That so describes me. I think I would definitely say I I identify most with like where I live, like my sense of self and where it's projecting out to the world is like through my head and how, how I want that to shift. I want my experience to drop down into my heart and to live from, from there most connected to the center of who I am. I want that to be where I live from. It's just an interesting perspective. So think about after you've done your move, after you've observed, after you've encountered where you're experiencing it in your body, and then after you have done a conscious movement, mindful movement to shift, have you experienced a shift? Just check in. And if so, what have you shifted to? I want to remind you, though, that even if you don't experience an immediate shift, know that the work you did was a great step towards deeper body connectedness and awareness I want you to revel in the insight that you gained about yourself as a result of the process. You just spent time building your store of internal resources that now can be accessible and available to you again when you need them. Sometimes the process is the shift. The fact that you you took some time to engage in a process to help you build emotional resilience is a shift. You didn't just stay there feeling uncomfortable and plowing through and not not addressing the pending thoughts and, you know, the things that we sometimes push aside because it's hard to deal with stress. Let's just admit that. We really would like to hope it would go away without us having to sit through it and address it, but it just doesn't work like that. Like we've talked about before in other podcasts, it really does accumulate so I'm so proud of you. Just think about that and be proud proud of yourself for making the decision to step out of the rumination stage for a bit, the hopelessness, and to let your emotions fall into your body, take notice of their physical shape and form, and move with intention as you aided them in the process of starting to be able to flow through and out of your body. That's an act of love to your future self. And you're building your resiliency muscle. So if nothing else, we're going to believe in the power of this process to create shift, even if the immediate feeling doesn't completely subside, the immediate stress feeling doesn't subside all the way. So then last, not lastly, we're going to go to number four, round number four, um, is to communicate with others and the importance of sharing what we've learned in this process of resiliency building with our loving, supportive community of people who are in our lives. So who's think about who's supporting you on this journey. Um, 
if you don't have anyone currently, is there someone you could ask? Or do you want to find an online community maybe of like-minded people who are going in the same direction as you um, or taking steps towards building their own resiliency? It's so powerful when we begin to share with others how we're becoming stronger. I think in some ways it just, excuse me, it solidifies to ourselves that we are able to develop internal strategies to help us overcome hard things. And when we say that to, to others and we retell that story, it becomes more ingrained in our own in our own center. And there's joy. There's joy in sharing our triumphs and our steps and our shifts with others. It just helps in us becoming more free to share this evolving process. It gives us also a sense of purposefulness as we come to share what we've learned with others. It now gives us a reason to practice these things so that we can give them to others who need them in their times of distress, which leads to the fifth important uh, thing to consider when building eternal internal resources. And that is identifying your purpose. So we're not just becoming more resilient for the sake of resiliency alone. That would be silly, but rather for a purpose. So why do you want to manage your stress more effectively? Why do you want to unblock your stuck emotions and allow them to flow more freely? Are there things your stuck emotions are keeping you from doing in life that you've always dreamed of doing? Who are you not becoming that you long to be when stress is hijacking your life? And what do you believe was possible before the stress cloud blew in with all its viciousness? Think about your purpose. Is it, I mean, even a purpose alone, I know for me, a great purpose for me learning how to become more resilient to my to stress is to be able to give others tools. Because unfortunately, if you're living in 2020 right now, there is a lot of stress for everyone. So many people have lost jobs. So many people have experienced uh, a variety of sorts of griefs and losses and um, uncertainty or division and loneliness. Uh, There are so many things. And so, yes, it's for my own strength and my own emotional well-being, but it's also so that I have something to give and contribute to others who are hurting around me, that we all together can grow stronger. So identify your purpose, or maybe it's that you want to be able, there's there's a career you want to pursue. There is a new skill you want to learn. There is a relationship you want to feel more fearless in and or more fearless to step out into a relationship. And so just think about your purpose. Think about what's driving you. And is it something sustainable? Is it something that really resonates with the core of your values and who you are? So just a quick review. When Seeking to build your store of internal resources. Start with your observation of what your thoughts are. Encounter them by acknowledging where they're showing up in your physical body. Use movement to help facilitate this process of shifting into the state, the the state that you desire to shift to in your emotional self. Communicate what you've learned with others and how how these these tools are creating just more awareness to what you're experiencing in your body and how you're growing as a result. And then identify and stay connected to the purpose and the why it matters to engage with our stress, to move through it, to become more resilient. 